Welcome to my video on how to set up VLANs and I'm going to be using some practical examples that I believe you'll see day to day some things practically you would want to use VLANs for. Before I get into the setup and configuration of this, let's just quickly talk about VLANs. What is a VLAN and why would you want to use VLANs? So VLAN simply stands for virtual LAN or virtual local area network and that's exactly what it is. It's a virtual network. So instead of having separate physical networks, you are virtually separating your networks using one level of equipment, if I can say it like that, one switch, one cable. Now if we didn't have VLANs and we wanted to set up what you're seeing on the screen right now, um, that's typically what, what it would look like. You would have three different switches, cabling, separate cabling for, for all these connections and PCs and you would also need a router in the middle that would route your traffic between these different subnets and networks. Um, so it really VLANs if you set them up correctly and hopefully I'm going to show you how to do that. It really is actually quite amazing. Now just quickly the reason why I'm going to be doing this and this is what you'll see if you look at my diagram is this these three VLANs I want to set up here one for data one for voice and one for Wi-Fi so and that's why we use VLANs um, to get that separation get the security benefit from that the separated broadcast domains is a benefit um, you know on your firewall depending on on the complexity of your firewall you can have separate application filters, web filters on the different networks. You don't need to go and use static IPs or static DHCP leases. It can get very tricky, especially with guest Wi-Fi's and so on. Uh, once you've got VLANs in place, it really simplifies that sort of setup. So let me take you through this and I hope this will uh, help you guys. I just wanted to show you physically how everything gets uh, connected together here. Uh, we've got an LTE router that's going to be our internet connection. Goes with a yellow cable to the WAN port on the USG, the Unified Security Gateway. This is going to be our firewall, it's going to do DHCP, things like that. Uh, then we've got a blue cable connected to the LAN port, which goes to um, the last port here on our Netgear switch. It's a managed switch uh, from Netgear. Um, yellow cable here goes to our MicroTIC router which is actually um, acting as a just a wireless access point for this uh, setup. We've got a FanWall IP handset and uh, which connects to port 1 on the switch but then from the handset we've got a cable going to our laptop or PC. Alright so this is the setup if we quickly look at our diagram here this is what we're going to do. VLAN 10 is going to be data, so that's going to be our laptop. VLAN 20 is going to be our handset, our voice VLAN, and then 50 is going to be our uh, Wi-Fi. So let's uh, get into the setting up of this. I have to be quite honest with you guys, my first time actually setting up VLAN. So I've done quite a bit of reading up, watching videos, and I have to say I didn't find one that just made it easy start to finish how to set this up how this works so i'm going to try and achieve that with this video and i really do hope i'm successful so here's a quick visual diagram of the way we've got everything connected at the moment i've got an lt router as my internet connection connected to the wan board of my unify security gateway which will act as my firewall dhcp server and so forth on the LAN port, I've got a cable on port 24 of my switch. This is a Netgear GS724. Uh, 23, I've got to a Microtech Haplight router, which is just going to act as a Wi Fi access point. On port 1, I've got a cable going to a FanWall IP handset, and from the handset, a cable to a PC or a laptop. And um, just to make things and keep things easy, I decided to make the IP ranges as follows VLAN 10 192.168.10.1, VLAN 20 20.1, VLAN 30 30.1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14,
or I should say .zero slash 24 if you want to refer to the whole network. I'm going to keep VLAN 1 here as my management VLAN, which is probably good for security. It does make it a bit tricky uh, if you need access to your switch later on and you're part of the data VLAN. I'm actually hoping someone would give me some advice or regards to this all right so let's go and set this up i'm going to start by setting up these networks on the unify uh, security gateway so let's go to our unify controller here and i've got my usg here and i'm going to go to the settings it works sort of similar you know depending on the device you use um, so what I've done is I've created the three networks. Now if we quickly edit one, just so you can see, literally just gave it a name, kept it on corporate, we're using the first LAN port on the USG, and we said, okay, this is going to be VLAN 10. There's our IP address for this interface, and here I've uh, set up the DHCP server scope and range and so on. That was basically all I did, and then did the same for the voice and, and Wi-Fi network, the main difference being the the subnet and the VLAN. Okay, so once that ha has been done, I'm going to go over here to my Netgear switch and go to VLANs. So the first step would be to create your free VLANs. All right, so it's literally just a case of I had to create another one, and I wanted to make this guest Wi-Fi, for instance. It's as simple as adding it. And there we go. Okay, once you've done that, you can go over here to Advanced and VLAN Membership. Okay, so let's uh, focus first on our data VLAN, VLAN 10. All right, so you'll see every port can have one of three settings. Either a blank, meaning there's no um, VLAN membership applied to that port, Press it once, you get a T for tagged. Now tagged means the packets that's going to come into this port are going to have tags. All right. And you can just pass that along. If it's a U, it means the packets coming in are not tagged. So typically packets from a laptop, PC and so on will be untagged. And you can then expect untagged packets and then you need to add a VLAN ID tag to those packets. All right, and that's what we're doing on port one here. Remember on port one, we've actually got two devices connected here. This is where it gets interesting. So the packets that's gonna come from the PC are gonna be untagged, but the packets coming from this IP handset are gonna be tag, tagged. All right, because the network interface on this IP handset is intelligent enough, it does give you the ability to tell, to specify, to say, okay, packets going out from the handset must be tagged, must be part of a VLAN, and this is the VLAN. In this case, we're going to make that VLAN 20, and I'll show that to you now. It will obviously also uh, take the packets coming from the PC, just leave it as is, as untagged, and send it onto the switch. Something interesting I did notice on the web interface of this handset is that it looks like you can actually say, you know what, on the second LAN port of the IP, IP handset, also tag the packets with whatever um, VLAN tag you want to. So that's also interesting, but I'm going to not go that route yet because I'm not sure if all IP handsets can do that. And that's typically not how this would have been set up normally. All right. So port one, I'm looking at the data VLAN. So we're talking about the packets coming from the PC through the handset. And these packets are gonna come in untagged. All right, so the rest we're not gonna worry for, uh, about now, but depending on how your switch will be populated, you if you're gonna have this same scenario on the first, however many ports you would do that. I'm just gonna focus on port one for now. Very important then, on port 24, this needs to be a T, which refers to tagged. And in this case, in this scenario, it actually refers to a trunk, what they call a trunk port. But basically what it means is it's going to take the packets that's tagged and pass the tag onwards. Okay, so 
just to complete the setup, once you've done this, and this only needs to be done on ports where you've got untagged traffic, it's a two-step process. So you're going to specify port 1 in this case as untagged, but then you also have to go to the port PVID configuration, port VLAN ID configuration. And here you need to go on your port 1 and say, OK, untagged traffic must be tagged with VLAN 10. So I specify 10 there and I apply. Now you'll see there's a 20 there as well and we're going to go onwards to why you are seeing that there. If we go back to the VLAN membership page, we've been looking at VLAN 10 now. So VLAN 10 has been set up. Now we're going to go onwards to VLAN 20 which is our voice VLAN. Now on VLAN 20, again on port 1, remember we now want to take care of the traffic coming from the handset. The traffic from the handset will be tagged and let me show you why and how. Okay, so we're going to go over here to network. So it's on DHCP at the moment which is fine. And if we go down here, you'll see there's a VLAN settings uh, area here. So typically this won't actually be enabled. So we enable it and then we say VLAN 20 because that's our voice VLAN. What this does is it, it then tags all the packets going out from the handset with this VLAN 20. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to come back here to my switch. And uh, as you've seen, We've enabled VLANs on the FanWall handset. We've said these packets must be tagged with VLAN 20. And then on the switch, what we're saying is on port 1, we've got our IP handset connected. The packets coming from the handset will be tagged with VLAN 20. So just accept them, pass them on. Uh, port 24 is going to be our trunk port. That's the one that goes to the firewall in our configuration here. And what we're saying here is just pass along those tagged um, packets. Alright, now we've set up this scenario here and we can actually see that this is working because our handset got an IP address of 192.168.20 which is correct because we've set it up um, on our USG to say okay if you see packets in VLAN 20 it's going to have to be in the 192.168.20 subnet and then also um, hand out IPs in that range. So that's been done correctly. The handset got an IP address of 20. So I'm quickly going to change my cabling here and I'm going to put the cable in that comes from the handset which is connected to port 1 on the switch. And if I now go ahead and just uh, ask for this uh, for my laptop to get a new IP address, it gets an IP address in the 192.168.10 range, which is exactly what we wanted to see because 10 is our data VLAN. So we now actually know that the VLAN configuration is working. Okay, let's go onwards to VLAN 30, which is our Wi Fi access point connected on port 23 of the switch. So we're going to say, show me the configuration for VLAN 50. Okay. And what I've got here is on 23, um, this port 23 is going to receive tagged traffic with uh, VLAN 50 coming through there. And then on 24, we just um, specifying that as a trunk port again to say, okay, just pass along all tagged traffic to port 24, which is going to our firewall. Now in this case, it depends on your wireless access point. Our wireless access point is uh, intelligent enough and capable of tagging its traffic with VLAN 50, similar to the IP handset. Yes, it does. So on our wireless interface here on the microchip, we've got this option under wireless tab VLAN 50, and we can say use tag. So that means whatever um, the device connects wirelessly on this will be tagged with VLAN 50 and that's why on the switch 
we will have this as, as tagged. If the wireless access point was like an entry level device with no such capability, then we would have gone the untagged route and let the switch tag those um, packets coming into this port. Okay, so that's our, um, our wireless access point configuration. So on port 23, VLAN 50, we're going to say it's tagged. On port 24, we just specify that again as our trunk port. Just allow all tagged traffic to go through. Now I've just connected wirelessly to the um, Microtik Wi-Fi access point, and I did get a 102. 168.30.11 IP address which means this all worked fine and that's basically our VLAN configuration working now you can definitely now go further and start where um, you know placing rules in your firewall to say okay but we don't want the VLAN uh, the wireless to be able to access the voice network the data um, and so forth but this is our my working VLAN configuration here. Hope you guys have something to add, to ask. Um, like I say, it's new for me, but I thought let me make this video while it's still fresh in my memory. Um, uh, so I can also share this with you guys. I hope it's, it's a complete video. If you have any questions, if there's anything that wasn't clear uh, that I should, that you want me to explain maybe in more detail, please go ahead and ask i really want this video to be a great resource for you guys just starting out with vlans and trying to figure it out my plan is also to make a few different videos where we do the same setup that i've just shown you here but using different hardware so we're going to do one where we replace this usg with a sophos xg firewall uh, i might also change this netgear switch to a zyxel switch uh, the, the VLAN configuration just looks a little bit different. We'll do one where we've got uh, a Unify access point here instead of a Microtik. Um, maybe we'll do a Yaylink handset here. So yes, I hope this guy this will help you guys, and I hope uh, I made sense. I really do hope so.